Hey everybody, Mr. Hames here in my car. We're about to go for a drive, get some fresh air and get me out of the basement. Today's goal is to answer some of your questions that you guys submitted on COVID-19, the novel coronavirus. Before I get to that, let's go for a drive. Let's do this. Now, let me just first say that I got so many great questions, uh, probably over a hundred responses yesterday when I asked what's on your mind when it comes to COVID-19. But the question I got the most in some way, shape or form was, when is this all gonna be over? I gotta be honest, I'm wondering that too. And I wish I could answer questions like that, but the reality is, is I just can't. I can't, because just like you guys, this is a completely new experience for me. Originally, COVID-19 was officially founded in December of 2019. So the 19 that you hear in COVID-19 is because it was discovered in 2019. Now the rest of COVID actually stands for something. CO stands for Corona, VI stands for virus, and D stands for disease. Now in reality, coronavirus is not a new thing, okay? This type of coronavirus, definitely a new thing but you've probably been exposed to other coronaviruses before. Those usually come with mild symptoms like you might feel with the common cold. Well, initially the answer is pretty simple. Wuhan, China, that's where it originated. It most likely came from a live animal market which is exactly what it sounds like, a place where live animals are sold. Now, scientists don't yet know the exact animal that this came from. Some have speculated maybe a bat. Another is possibly the pangolin, which is an animal that is endangered, by the way, and traded on the black market. It's illegal to uh, purchase and trade and sell, but it's something that sometimes appears in these markets in China. These animals, just like humans, carry viruses. And sometimes these viruses in rare instances can mutate to then be able to live and affect humans. And that's exactly what happened here. Mutation occurred in a virus that was present in one of these animals being sold in a live market in China and came into contact with a human, infected the very first human. And then it easily spread from human to human. So let's talk about how it spreads. Human to human prolonged contact. So what does that mean? Well, we're social creatures, humans are. We like to hang out with each other. We high five, we shake hands, we talk. When we're doing these things, we're picking up food and we're eating it, we're putting it in our mouth. We don't even realize how many times we touch our faces every single day. This comes from human to human contact. And if we're going to stop it spreading from human to human contact, what do you think we have to do? That's where this whole social distancing thing is coming from. This is why you're encouraged to stay away from people. Six feet between you, no large gatherings, close schools, close non-essential businesses, only go out for what you need. Because every time you come into contact with another person, you risk spreading that virus to them, even if you don't feel symptoms yet. And there's this thing called flatten the curve. So. What is that all about? Flattening the curve is this idea that if you keep the virus from spreading too fast, you keep the number of cases in a country from rising too much too quickly. Instead of having a steep curve where you have a lot of virus cases, a lot of positive confirmed cases all very quickly, you slow it down and you gradually allow people to get exposed to that virus. Now, some people have the question, okay, what's it matter? If everybody's going to eventually get this thing, and I'm not saying everybody will, but if everybody is, 
what does it matter whether everybody gets it like that or everybody gets it over a long period of time? Why is that important? Let's just get this thing over with. Let's, so to speak, rip off the Band-Aid and move on. Well, here's the problem with that. I want you to imagine for a second that you're juggling. Everybody knows what juggling is. You take multiple balls and you throw them in the air and you try to keep them and there's a certain technique that you use. I wouldn't know, but I'm not a juggler, but you can see here's my sister trying to juggle, okay? Now, it's pretty easy to handle just three balls going in the air if you're a beginner juggler, right? You can keep them from hitting the ground. We can consider each one of those things being thrown in the air safe because every time they're being caught and they're not hitting the ground. However, if that same juggler then is handed another ball and then another ball, it becomes much tougher to juggle everything you're given. And eventually, it does not matter how good of a juggler you are, if we keep handing balls to the juggler, they're gonna drop one of them. <laughs> well, let's think of this as the healthcare system now. Our hospitals, our doctors, our nurses, our healthcare professionals, our system is only built to be able to treat so many patients. And we can be very good at treating those patients as long as we aren't overwhelmed. If we have enough in the hospitals that we can take care of and help, we're not going to have as many patients die. We're not as going to have as many patients severely affected by this because they can be treated and they have a higher chance of being okay and recovering. However, if we overwhelm the system, there's going to have to be difficult choices made. There might not be enough equipment. Personnel might be overwhelmed. People are going to have a harder time being treated because there's not gonna be enough people to take care of them. There's not gonna be enough space for these people to get better. Now, if that's happening in our hospitals, and we're thinking of this like juggling, well, more balls are going to be dropped. Not able to take care of those people. They're dying. And that's a serious thing. So that's basically why we talk about flattening the curve trying to reduce the number of positive cases in the US so our healthcare system can handle the amount of patients that are getting sick. Now the next question that I seem to get a lot, why do I need to worry about this? I heard it only affects old people. Yes, there are people that are considered at a higher risk. Those over 65, those who are immunocompromised, or those who have other existing health conditions, especially things like asthma or conditions that have to do with the respiratory system, are they at higher risk? Yes. But I wanna make something very, very clear. People of all ages are getting this disease, and people of all ages have passed away, have died from this disease. Now, while your chances of passing away from it are greater if you're older or if you have a health condition, it's still important to note that anyone, anybody, male or female, any age, any race, can get this virus and can get it severely. Let's take our county, DeKalb County. Yesterday at this time, we had 11 total cases in DeKalb County, a number that's expected to grow. Out of those 11, two people are in their 20s. One person is in their 30s, like me. Three people are in their 40s, two people are in their 50s, and three people are in their 70s. Now, I don't say these things to scare you, okay? If it sounds scared, I'm not. I feel very confident that as a society, we're gonna come out of this and we're gonna come out better because of it. I'm just saying we should take it seriously. We need to be careful. And before we say we're overreact or anything like that, well, I just want to ask the question, what would happen if we underreact? Okay, so now you're like, all right, Hames, thanks for scaring the crap out of me. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I'm feeling very confident that we are going to get through this better. I am feeling very confident that we're doing a lot of the right things out there. Now, is there still a lot to be known, a lot we don't know, and a lot to still figure out? Yes, but we can rest assured that we have tools like science, and there are scientists out there right now trying to design solutions uh, to get through this, trying to get more information so that we can get through this. There are healthcare professionals who are putting their own well-being on the line to take care of people who are getting this disease. 
So the least we can do is we can do things like be prepared, but be positive. And definitely don't panic. It's not gonna help anybody if you start panicking and living scared all the time. Just stay positive. Know that there are things that we can do to help right now. And one of those things, just stay home. And when I say stay home, I mean stay isolated. If you're gonna go outside like I am, go to a place where you're not gonna encounter really that many other people. Just a little bit ago, I tried doing this video over on the bridge and I had too many people come walking by. So I had to keep getting off the bridge so they could walk by. Everybody was kind of abiding by the social distancing guidelines of six feet or more, which made me feel good that people were following those rules. But I had to come way over here so I was way far away of people. So I wanna let you know that social distancing, while it kind of stinks, is the right thing to do. But like I said, instead of panicking, make it a positive experience. This could be opportunity to better yourself to learn more, whether that be more about the virus or if you're tired of hearing about it, learn more about something that you have always wanted to learn. Read a book, uh, watch a documentary on something that interests you. Take time to learn about something that you don't ordinarily, ordinarily have the time to do. Maybe you always wanted to play guitar or draw or pick up something like, I don't know, running or exercising more. I've loved seeing all of these people outside and getting out and doing things. In every crisis, there is opportunity. What opportunities are there gonna be for you? Next thing is, go outside and breathe the fresh air. Today's unbelievable. This vitamin D that I'm getting for the sun right now, this not only boosts my immune system, which is something we all need right now, but it also makes me a happier individual. It makes me excited and happy to be alive. Fresh air could all do us some good right now. So get outside. And I want you, again, just to keep this in mind. Remember, this is gonna get better. This is not gonna last forever. Do we know how long it's gonna last? Not exactly. We have ideas, we have predictions. But COVID-19 is something that we will learn from and we will get better at predicting and, and hopefully uh, preventing things like this from happening in the future. If it does, we will be more equipped to respond because of it. And if you have any other questions, you can always reach out to me. I hope you always know that. Guys, thank you so much. I hope this was informative. I hope that uh, you appreciated seeing me walk around aimlessly in Sycamore Park. And uh, I hope you appreciated the answers you got today. Okay? This wraps up our e-learning for the week. I've really enjoyed staying connected with you. I've really enjoyed the fact that uh, some of you have shown me what you're doing at home, what you're learning about. Um, we'll see you next week. forgot you. So sorry about that.